Breastfeeding is important for a child as it provides the best possible start in, its, in his or her own life. Uh, it provides health, nutritional and emotional benefits to both the mother and the children. Also, it makes part of sustainable food system. Breastfeeding is a natural process and it's not always easy. Support to the mothers is very much required and that is why awareness is completely necessary. Breastfeeding Awareness Week is a global campaign to raise awareness and galvanize action on themes related to breastfeeding. Uh, WBW 2020 theme is protect breastfeeding, a shared responsibility. Many circle a healthcare media platform is conducting a series throughout the month of August on this occasion to spread awareness about the virtues of breastfeeding for both the mother and the child by speaking to experts. Hi, I'm Smita Kumar and you're watching MediCircle. And today in this talk, we are going to speak to Dr. Parzan Mistry. Dr. Parzan is a consultant, obstetrician, gynecologist, and infertility specialist attached to the major hospitals in Mumbai. Dr. Parzan has done his master's in surgery in obstetrics and gynecology from the prestigious Grand Medical College and Surgery Group of Hospitals, Mumbai. Post MS, he has done his DNB in Ops and Gyne from Malana Azad Medical College and Lok Narayan Naik Hospital, New Delhi. He has also done his master's in reproductive medicine from London, UK and fellowship in reproductive medicine from the Indian College of Ops and Gynecologists. Besides that, Dr. Parzan has also done his fellowship in minimal access surgery and is a member of the National Academy of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. He has been an active member of the Indian Society of Assisted Reproduction and Federation uh, and a member of uh, FOXI of India and Best Zone of Perinatology Committee. Dr. Parzan has been awarded with a lot of awards like FOXI Young Achievers Award and has won other prizes like first prize on top of contraception, first prize for best dissertation and CM Shah prize on high risk obstetrics. Dr. Parzan has also authored chapters on fibroids, infertility, progesterone and IVF legal issues in various textbooks. Hello, Dr. Parzan, welcome to MediCircle World Breastfeeding Awareness Week. Hello, Smita. Thanks for having me over here. Uh, we are pleased to have you with us, Dr. Parzan, and let's find it out why breastfeeding is still uh, not happening in those numbers because, again, breastfeeding is really, really important both for the child and for the mother. So a quick question there, uh, Dr. Parzan, how long should the babies be nursed or breastfed? So breastfeeding, the breast milk as such, you know, uh, as Apli said, breast milk is liquid cold. And it is very essential for a mother to breastfeed. You know, with, with the advent of formulas and uh, various substitutes, we have gone, uh, you know, from the breastfeeding to the formula. But it's very essential for mothers to know what is the importance of breastfeeding. Now, when we are talking about the duration of the breastfeeding or rather the frequency of the breastfeeding, yeah. How long should a baby be fed? How much should a baby be fed? And how often should a baby be fed? It's very important for us to know that basically it should be feeding on demand. So most of the newborns demand feeds. Now what happens is that newborn baby should be fed at least 8 to 12 times a day uh, for the first month. In their first month, they should be at least having around 8 to 12 feeds a day. That is, they should be at least fed every 1 to 3 hours. Now breast milk initially is easily digested because of its constituents. Now, it's very surprising that breast milk is, uh, there are five types of breast milk, you know, starting from what is called as colostrum and then it eventually goes on to the final milk. So the initial breast milk is easily digested. So the newborns tend to get hungry very often. So it's very important so that the newborns are fed every one to three hours. Now, just by feeding the newborns also, it stimulates the breasts to produce more milk and it is very essential that also helps in the milk production and to suffice the hunger and thirst of the baby. So, as I said, in the newborn, uh, the feeding should be at least 8 to 12 times a day. And eventually, as the newborn, as the baby grows old, the frequency of the feed decreases. Now, by the time the baby is around 1 to 2 months old, the frequency of the nursing decreases from, say, around 8 to 12 to 7 to 9 times a day. So first week, like I said, it is very important that the baby will feed, baby should be fed on demand. 
that is the baby will give certain cues baby will cry when baby is hungry so ideally like i said around 1 to 3 hours should be a gap between the feeds uh, how to calculate this 1 to 3 so the start of the the start the starting episode of the breastfeeding should be calculated as the starting time and not the end of the feed so suppose if you have started breastfeeding at 8 am so the next 3 hours will be like 8 9 and 10 so the next feed should start at 10 am not that if the breastfeeding has happened from say 8 to 9 it should not start from 9 10 and 11 so from the start of the feed the timing should be calculated a uh, baby cannot go hungry more than 4 hours so it's very important it's a very golden rule that newborn should not go more than four hours without breast milk. This is in the initial stages of their life. Now, like I said, that as the babies grow old, when, uh, the frequency of the feeds tend to decrease, say from suppose three to two and to even one and a uh, half, you know, uh, from uh, three to four hours as they tend to get old. Now, babies generally uh, have uh, feeding patterns and which changes over the time. Babies give certain signs of hunger, that is babies tend to cry, baby tend to, uh, you know, uh, 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 demand feed and uh, fusses about it. Now, there are certain points in the age bracket of the baby where they will require more feed. Like I said, that as the baby tends to get older, the feeding demands decrease. But in certain periods of time, which are called as rapid growth or growth spurts, babies tend to demand more feeds than that time. Now, there are these growth spurts which are around 7 to 14 days. Uh, when the baby is around 7 to 14 days, that is the first growth spurt. The second growth spurt happens at around the second month. The third growth spurt happens at around the fourth month. And the fourth growth spurt happens at around six months. So, like I said, that even at the later parts of the feed, that is around four months and six months, that time even the baby will tend to demand more feeds. Now, uh, like I said, so whenever the baby gives you hints, follow its cues, uh, feed the milk. Again, very important that the start milk, you know, that like I said, that there are almost five types of milk which a baby gets, right, uh, which a mother rather produces right from the start. And the initial milk, as we have, uh, as it's always stressed, important, the colostrum is very, very important. Now, the liquid gold, what we say uh, as the breast milk, comes from this colostrum because the colostrum is a thick yellowish orange liquid and this is the first milk it is very very important it's almost just five to six ml most of the women won't feel the need to give it you know nowadays as many deliveries are going from normal delivery to cesarean sections there is happening that the feeds are being delayed and most of these babies miss out on colostrum which is very very important so this colostrum not only gives baby the essential nutrition but also protects babies against the diseases which will happen in the future, like asthma and diabetes, because this is very rich in immunoglobulins, which is IgA. So it's very important that the baby has to get this colostrum. Now, since this colostrum is very less, say around only 5 ml, um, it also gives a habit for the baby to suckle and safely coordinate the swallowing and breathing movements. So like the baby has to swallow the milk, and also has to breathe in between. This initial very small amount of milk also habituates the baby to initiate the suckling reflex. Now, colostrum, like I said, very important, easy to digest. Um, they have, uh, it's got the ratio of sugar to proteins, uh, which is an apt ratio, which also prevents uh, episodes of hypoglycemia in the baby. And uh, it is very, very important. Again, uh, when we say is that what is the adequacy of feeding? It's always important to check whether your baby is adequately fed or not. And the way we come to know whether the baby is adequately fed or not is by uh, looking at the baby's urine output and how frequently the baby is pooping. So over the second or the third day, minimum almost two to three wet diapers and around two stools indicate that the baby is fed well. Uh, later on, as the baby progresses, five or more wet, wipe, uh, uh, wet diapers uh, uh, and the urine tends to become a little bit more on the paler side uh, from, you know, dark yellow, it goes to pale yellow. Uh, it indicates again that the baby is fed, fed well. Now, by the fifth month, baby should at least have two yellowish stools with around six to seven uh, urine uh, episodes or six to seven wet diapers. That means the baby is adequately fed. Uh, generally, the breastfeeding, obviously, six months exclusive breastfeeding. 
followed by that we start the weaning period wherein the babies are introduced solids depending upon how the baby takes solids that doesn't mean the breastfeeding has to discontinue the breastfeeding goes on for another one one and a half year so i suppose that answers the question as to Definitely. how long they should be fed how much they should be fed and how you should monitor whether they are fed well or not definitely but many a times mothers uh, complain of having lot of urine passed by the baby if especially they are fed on formula milk comparatively to mother's milk uh, why what is the difference dr parzan why this happens the urine passage is just because what happens is that the kidneys of the baby are a little bit nice to hold on the you know to uh, metabolize things now uh, like we said the infants tend to heat formula a lot so whatever goes in comes out more uh, it's not that that you know a baby on formula fed will tend to pass more urine as compared to that of a breastfed baby like i said 6 to 7 is the less is barisum the more is okay so we are not worried whether the baby has more wet diapers what we are bothered is the baby should not be wetting less diapers So that means if the urine is not adequate, that is the baby is not passing urine adequately. That means the baby is not fed well. You know, it's always uh, very essential that most of these formula-fed babies, or rather, most of the babies who are mix-fed, you know, that some babies tend to take breast as well as formula feeds. What happens is then in uh, them there are a lot of hunger pangs. They they start to cry a lot. Uh, you know, most of the parents think that oh, we are feeding formula to the baby. and of course we are going according to the formulas and you know we are feeding adequately we are giving around 4 ounces we are calculating it every 2 uh, 3 hours and we are giving the best amount of feed but most of the uh, parents think that you know the baby is crying there is there is rigorous crying and most of the parents think that you know the crying is because you know babies have tend to develop some colic or reflux but the first thing it's very important to know whether your baby is adequately fed or not so if your baby is crying a lot even on formulas make sure that your baby is adequately fed colic reflux and other uh, conditions which causes excessive crying in the first few months of life comes a little bit later than what it is that they are baby are getting baby is getting less amount of feed so it's very important to tackle the need of the baby also like i said urine output that is how many wet diapers are there whether baby is pooping well whether the what is the consistency of the stool the color of the stool is very important it has to be uh, the mustard yellow colored stool uh, which a baby should be passing and above and all the weight gain it is again very important that we follow up with the pediatrician and check whether the weight gain is adequate or not now uh, since uh, babies newborns tend to get vaccinated Uh, so that gives a benefit to eventually go to a pediatrician and monitor the growth charts equivalently at the same time so it's very important for us to assess whether the baby is adequately gaining the weight because most of the parents say oh my baby is crying a lot i think my baby's got some colic or reflux because i am feeding formulas i am feeding my breast milk i am feeding express milk but it's very important that most of these babies are underfed so it's very important first to make sure that you are feeding the baby well and then the other conditions okay. have to be ruled out dr prasad what is like breast engorgement and what can women do about it uh so most of the times uh, uh breast normally tend to get engorged even routinely in pregnancy uh it's generally because there is an increased blood supply to the breast so eventually it's normal to have some amount of breast engorgement and uh, you know as the milk uh, is getting produced as the baby sucks and the new milk tends to develop there is some amount of uh, uh, engorgement but if the engorgement becomes more if the feeds are not given properly or probably the baby is not sucking well or you know the mother is not emptying out the breast properly then there is a problem and that is what is called as the pathological breast engorgement when it may even lead to what is called as milk fever that is when the breast gets engorged you know there is a, a, the fever can set in there will be a run down feeling uh, uh, you know uh, as the mother continues to empty the breast the symptoms tend to get uh, decreased and the fever tends to also get increased if not tackled in the right time it can also cause infection and inflammation around the breast which is called as mastitis and eventually if still it is not tackled there might be pocket of pus collections and it can also result into breast abscesses which have to be drained later on 
So breast engorgement, like I said, eventually does tend to happen. Normally, after pregnancy, your breast tends to get full. Eventually, when the baby is put to, uh, you know, sometimes uh, babies have to be uh, separated for the mother due to some reasons or the other, or basically the baby is not adequately feeding, or suppose the baby is not adequately sucking, or suppose if there is any issue with the breast, that is, there is an inverted nipple, or there are cracks in the nipple, and that is when the baby cannot get hold of the breast. It's very important that the entire dark area, that is the areola, along with the nipple, latches inside the baby. That will create a suction effect and that will help the uh, baby to uh, suckle and the breast to let down completely. It's very important also to empty out the breasts. It's very important. So before, because like I said, that there is there are, uh, there are different types of milk. It's very important that in the breast milk also, there is something which is called as the fore milk and the hind milk. So the fore milk is the milk which initially comes out of the breast, which quenches the baby's thirst. Mm -hmm. And the hind milk, which is coming out later, quenches the baby's hunger. So it's very important that if you want to quench your baby's thirst as well as the hunger, the, both the fore milk and hind milk have to go to the baby. And for that, it's very essential to empty out the breast. Incomplete empty, emptying out of the breast will further result into uh, breast engorgement, can further result into milk fever, can further result into mastitis, and can further result into breast abscesses. Okay, and for this, they can use breast pumps or also assisted by nurse so that because there are a lot of things like um, when sometimes mothers are not able to feed due to the size of the nipple or sometimes they are nowadays you get different kinds of devices from the medical shops itself. Even the doctors suggest that these can be used and it is helping the baby to suck it properly so that the milk is emptied and the mother is also okay and well and the baby is also well. Exactly. So what happens is there are, like you pointed out correctly, there are, there are devices, there are mechanical devices, as well as there are uh, devices which can be connected, you know, there are electronic breast pumps. Now, easier ones are ones which you get it with two-way outlets so that you can just pull both the bottles together and uh, empty out both the breast at the same time. Initially, where, where you had one single nozzle, where you had to empty out one breast and then put it on the other breast, it was very time-consuming. Now, with the, uh, with the uh, electrical suction pumps, both the breasts can be emptied out at the same time. And it's very important that, you know, you don't need to remove the breast milk and throw it away. It's very important that this breast milk can be used to feed the babies. Now, uh, a newly pumped uh, milk uh, can stay in room temperature for up to four hours. So even if you are letting out your breast, if you have evacuated, you have pumped out the breast milk, you can keep it at the site for four hours, till four hours and feed the baby. Now, if you uh, immediately pump out the milk and you have put it in the refrigerator, it can go for around four days. It can be stored for around four days to uh, for the baby to feed. If you put it in the deep freezer, if you put it in the uh, deep freezer, it can go up to even one year. You know, so once you take out the milk from the fridge or the freezer, what you just need to do is take a pan or uh, take a pan, pour some water, uh, heat it, uh, make a water bath, and just thaw that breast milk. Uh, a freshly thawed breast milk can remain outside for 24 hours. And uh, again, if it is refrigerated, uh, uh, sorry, a freshly uh, uh, thawed breast milk can uh, remain out for two hours. And if thawed and again put into the fridge can even stay for 24 hours. But that is generally not recommended. So what we generally say is once the breast is uh, breast milk is thawed from the refrigerator, it's better that it goes inside the baby in the next two hours. So that's what it is very important that just by uh, just because that the breast is engorged, sometimes you just need uh, you don't need to just take out the breast milk and throw it away. This breast milk can be utilized for the later parts of the life. Yeah. And uh, very importantly, uh, some uh, there are some mothers uh, where uh, you know there is difficulty in feeding. Uh, in India, uh, I mean, very importantly, at uh, Siam Hospital, where the first breast uh, bank was breast milk bank was started by Dr. Arvinda Fernandez, and now with the advent of the breast banks, uh, breast milk banks, there are a lot of mothers who have over engorged breasts, and they say that we are producing too much milk. We don't know what to do with it. We just have to throw it away. Many mothers are stepping forward and saying that, listen, you know, I have got a lot of milk. Why shouldn't I give it for someone? to uh, utilize who is not basically getting a feed or not getting breast milk. There are children uh, in which breast, uh, you know, um, they have to be separated from the mothers and certain children uh, in which breast feeding is contraindicated, whether, you know, when the mother is on certain medications, cancer medications, they cannot give their breast milk. 
So these women come ahead, give it to the milk banks, and these milk banks can further uh, give breast milk to the mothers, which can be utilized later on in the life. That's such a noble thing to do because breast milk is like, like I mean, it's such a good thing for the babies and those who are not able to produce it. I think it would. That's a very good idea to get it from the milk bank. Uh, moving on to the next question, Dr. Parzan. Uh, sometimes the nipples get sore due to breastfeeding. So, what can the women do about it, and how can it be tackled? So, nipple soreness, or basically cracked nipples, is what we call it in our general terms. Uh, is basically either due to two causes. You know, sometimes the nipples get dried and they get cracked, or sometimes uh, it happens that there is a little fungal infection around the nipple, and that can also be passed into the baby. Now, whenever there are sore nipples, the very very simple solution of it is just take out the milk and just apply it on the nipple, and that is the best and the cheapest way to get rid of the sore nipples. So, milk itself has got this healing property. So, you can just take out the milk. And apply it on the nipple and the areola part. That itself will soothe the nipple and prevent sore nipples. By chance, if it still doesn't get relieved by that, we have uh, preparations in the medical preparations in the market which are called as lanolins. So lanolins, we have uh, lanolin creams, lanolin ointments, which can be applied on the nipple and uh, which is again, which is safe for the baby. That even if the baby suckles on lanolin, it is not going to harm the baby. So even mothers with cracked nipples can either try applying uh, breast milk on their nipples or get lanolin and get it applied. It's very important that the other common cause of cracked nipples, sore nipples, is a fungal infection of the nipple. So it's very important to also examine the oral cavity of the baby that the baby is not having any fungal infection inside. So in that case, baby has to be given certain antifungals. But otherwise, the common common cause is of the cracked nipple is the dryness of the nipple, and the simple solution is the breast milk and lanolin. Uh, uh, Dr. Prasad, there are a lot of uh, benefits that a patient, I mean, that a baby can get uh, from breast milk, like from getting uh, uh, cured from different kinds of diseases like asthma, then uh, type one and type two diabetes. Again, lot of infections and allergies can be cured from this. So, uh, our next question is: In such if a woman, if a mother is affected from COVID, because again, that's a very common case where mothers who are getting affected with COVID or they have been suspecting COVID, uh, should they be feeding uh, their babies their breast milk? Uh, and would it be safe? Because again, at one stage, but they are saying that breast milk is really, really necessary and important for the, uh, for the child. So in such a case, what is advisable uh, for these uh, women, mothers especially, uh, by doctors? I'm not surprised that this question has popped up and this question has been there since past one, one and a half year and commonly uh, common questions being asked by mothers these days. You know, a lot of my pregnant patients coming, uh, you know, COVID positive, you know, uh, before pregnancy or deliver, they have come COVID positive. Uh, very, very uh, simple answer to this is yes, 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 you can breastfeed. Uh, there is no evidence that the breast milk secretes the virus. So there is no vertical transmission of the infection which is very important. Now, there are certain conditions which causes vertical transmission of the infection to the babies, which is not so with COVID. So COVID will not get secreted into the breast milk and go to the baby. So COVID is mainly spread through droplet infections. That is when the babies are in the contact with the uh, secretions, nasal or the oral secretions of the mother. Now, a baby can breastfeed. What the mother has to do is to follow the simple COVID protocols, that is, wear the mask whenever she has to feed the baby, wash her hands well, sanitize, take the baby, and she can breastfeed the baby. And there's absolutely no problem in feeding the baby as far as COVID is concerned because the benefits outweigh the risk in such cases. Like we said that breast milk is such an essential aspect of a newborn. It is, it is the only food which a baby can get. And it is very important that the baby should get that food. So breast milk has to be given even in COVID mothers uh, as long as the mother is following the strict COVID protocols. Now, uh, it's very important that, you know, most of these mothers also, there should be encouraged rooming in also. The baby can stay along with mother as long as the baby is kept in a crib, which is around six to seven feet distance. Uh, there should be a sanitizer always available at the hand for the mother. So whenever she's going to touch the baby, uh, she should always wear on the mask, wash her hands, sanitize the hands, take the baby, make sure that she is uh, 
feeding the baby well, uh, putting her to the breast. Many of the women use uh, nipple shields for feeding. And it is very important that every time this nipple shield is used, it should not be just is kept everywhere. The moment the nipple shield is used, it has to immediately go into the sterilizer and it has to be sterilized before the next feed is started. So many of the women do keep their nipple shields at the side and then they take again it, uh, they take it again for the next feed. Uh, and you know, that again forms a contact medium, you know, because uh, the mother might, might have touched her face, she might have touched the nipple shield, kept it at the side. So again, that can be one of the formats which passes the infection. So as soon as the nipple shield is used, it has to be washed and get into the sterilizer as soon as possible. So yes, COVID mothers can and have to feed uh, uh, breast milk is absolutely necessary, even in COVID mothers, as long as they're taking the standard COVID protocols. Definitely, I think you clear a lot of doubts because there has been a lot of misinformation, uh, especially for breastfeeding. Even the World Health Organization states that the transmission of this uh, active COVID-19 viruses is uh, not uh, detected till date, which is can be happen through breast milk or breastfeeding. So there is actually no reason to avoid or stop breastfeeding. Uh, as we discuss all these important factors like breastfeeding, it is really, really important for the next uh, generation of India to become like healthy because uh, breastfeeding leads to healthier babies, healthier children who have got fewer instances of allergies, eczema, asthma and so many other cancers, even type 1, type 2 diabetes, then respiratory illnesses and speech and other problems. So it is actually really uh, going to help your baby. Uh, times have changed and I think women are now opening up to the facts and also sharing their problems about breastfeeding. Uh, there was a time in between when uh, formula milk and other things was uh, very much promoted. But again, I think we are going back to our old traditional things and uh, promoting breastfeeding as uh, even WHO is uh, uh, promoting the breastfeeding from the 1st of August to 7th uh, across 120 countries. And that is why we are having this talk. I hope definitely our audience would be very much informed by Dr. Pazan's important advices and tips that he gave for breastfeeding today. Thank you so much, Dr. Pazan, for joining us. Thank you. So like I said, that the World Health Organization teams protect breastfeeding. It is a shared responsibility. So like Medi Circle and like other platforms, they are, we are sharing the responsibility. It's very important that the uh, that the education and that the right information gets disseminated to the mothers. Uh, thank you, Smitha. Thanks. Welcome.